Good evening. Yesterday was a program in which I attended where Sam Petroda, Painivel Tyagarajan and Raghuram Rajan talked about redesigning India for the future. It was a freewheeling discussion and it went on for many hours. Today, Business Standard has written an article on that, on what Rajan said, and I thought I should speak about it. Basically, what Rajan said is, there are several areas in which business operates. Some of them, like watchmaking, government has no business to be in, and it would have been proper for government to get rid of HMT while it was still a profit-making company. I agree. In fact, when the Tamil Nadu budget was presented, I did suggest that government of Tamil Nadu has a legacy holding in Titan when MGR partnered with JRD Tata to start Titan to make watches in India. And government of Tamil Nadu still holds a substantial stake in Titan. And it is high time that Tamil Nadu government gets rid of that stake and reduces its debt. There are areas like that where government has no business. There are some areas like airports, ports, where if government completely hands it over to the private sector and without proper regulation, it becomes a monopoly. And if it becomes a monopoly, the profits are squeezed out by the private sector. In India, there is a particular danger of that happening. Previously, the Adani group had not even operated one airport. Today, they operate 50 airports. All the ports in India are controlled by Adani. So basically, what message you are sending to the foreigner is, if you want to enter India through a port or through an airport, you have to enter through an Adani-controlled enterprise. This is not good. There should have been sufficient regulation for you to make sure there is no monopoly. But what this government is doing is going towards a monopoly. Rajan also concurred with what I have been arguing for several times. Instead of taking out these assets, and monetizing them separately, they could have sold the company as such. I have pointed out the pipeline are part of Gale's assets and if you monetize, the gains will go to Gale and not to the central government. The benefit to the central government will be in proportion to what they hold in Gale and not the entire money. Nirmala Sitaraman has conveniently ignored this fact. Rajan agrees it is better for them to reduce their stake in Gale and make it a truly public limited company and run it like ITC, LNT or even ICICI or Access Bank where the public is the owner and one group does not control the majority. Once the government diverts control, then the company is able to recruit the best of talent and the company can run profitably. Also, like I said, Rajan points out that the government has hobbled the public sector units deliberately at times. Though he didn't bring it up, I would like to bring it up. Today, the government is talking about leasing telecom towers in BSNL. But it is this government that systematically destroyed BSNL by not giving it a 4G license to operate. If it had given a 4G license to BSNL on time, BSNL would have survived as a major telecom player. Instead, to enable and help its friends run a profitable duopoly, BSNL was not given a license. After long after must protest, when the BSNL was asked to give a license, then the government asked BSNL to pay several thousand crores for it. When BSL could not pay and wanted to pledge its assets, a substantial land bank, to make good the payment, the government turned around and said, you cannot pledge it. Now, having deliberately killed BSNL, what is the point in lease, leasing BSNL towers? BSNL could not pay the VRS it offered to its several employees on time and there were talks of delayed settlement. Several employees who are contract employees, their salaries have not been paid on time. Several suppliers to BSNL have not been able to collect money. Well, you have deliberately killed a public sector unit. Now we are talking about monetizing it. There is, it's absolutely ridiculous. The other important point that Rajan made, drawing upon his experience as a Reserve Bank Governor was, governments have deliberately killed public sector banks because public sector banks, the way they are structured, cannot attract talent. The salaries is fixed and it's rigid. Performers and non-performers get the same salary. So, no performer worth his salt will continue to stick in a nationalized bank. And there has been a complete brain drain. In the first wave, 
a lot of public sector bankers who were gifted jump ship and helped the first wave of private sector bankers. Then came the VRS in Vajpayee's time, when another set of talented public sector bankers collected their VRS and pension and started working in private sector banks. Today, even candidates who study and pass exams in the National Institute of Banking do not want to work for public sector banks. The public sector banks are hobbled and only the worst of talent joins them. Whereas private sector banks are able to recruit the very best and the most talented people and are, are able to hire technology and therefore are able to move much faster than what a public sector bank can do. This means the access to low cost deposits will move towards private sector banks. Even the profitable lending like retail lending moves away from the public sector banks and the public sector banks are left only with debt corporate loans. Only those who cannot borrow money from anywhere else will go to a public sector bank and borrow money. This is a deliberate act according to Rajan of not recruiting talent by all governments in power. The other important thing Rajan mentions is there should be control issues on governance. It's high time that the central government decentralizes and transfers more powers to the state. He drew a historical comparison and said when we became independent, India was union was a frail union and therefore lot of powers had to be centralized. 75 years down the line, we should be more confident about our union and decentralize more powers to the state and further decentralize it to local bodies. There are several areas of public good where the private sector will not be competitive. He primarily mentions two public goods. One is education and health care. India's education and health care is in a terrible state. And because of increasing debt to GDP, which is nearly 90% of GDP today, the central government in its budget has cut off expenditure towards debt, towards education and health. Imagine in a year when there is a pandemic and schools have been shut for 16 months and need for remedial education, the government is spending less. Most of us will be surprised to know, in spite of India doing well in the Olympics and the Paralympics, the total amount of money spent on sports is less than last year. There is a need for the government to prioritize on where it needs to spend money and where it does not. Thank you for watching. Be rich. It's a great privilege and honor that so many of you in thousands have subscribed to my channel and have supported me. I have written two books in English, The Alchemy of Money and Ordinary Stocks, Extraordinary Profits. These books are published by us and are ready. If you want to procure a copy, send us a message to the WhatsApp number given below and my team would respond to you. If you want an Amazon Kindle copy, you can click the link below. Finally, those who wish to consult with me can send a mail to berichenglish at gmail.com. Once again, I thank you for your support. If you like this video, press the subscribe button of my channel, hit the like button and turn on the bell notification.